What's up guys, Nick from Stack and Sell coming back to you guys with a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking all about how to price your sports cards before going to a show. Let's get into it. So if you're watching this video, you either came across it because you're going to a sports card show in the future, or you've been to sports card shows and you maybe just want to learn about pricing your cards, that's what I'm going to be getting into today. And in no shape or form am I saying am I an expert on pricing your cards. I still think that I overprice some cards or I underprice some cards. So I'm not the expert in this. This is just some suggestions that I would make from going to sports card shows over the last couple of years and setting up at shows. These are just the advice that I would give. So if you have any other additional advice, please leave it in the comments below. Let everybody know your additional advice on what you would do price-wise, everything to that extent. Let me know in the comments below. All right, let's get into this. Step number one, I would say, is make some sort of system. So if you're going to have dollar bins at your table, make it easy for people to understand how much cards are going to cost. Understand there's some people that go in and don't price their cards at all. And, you know, that's fine with them. I'm the kind of person that goes into a show. I will price every single card. And I will also tell people straight up, hey, guys, if there is cards in that bin and you pull a bunch of them, then we could get a better deal done. I could work better on price if you buy multiple stuff. There are certain people out there that'll go to a show and just put their their uh, their box out and say, okay, this is this box is ten dollars and under. This box is five dollars and under. This box is a dollar. I would just say make it easy for people to understand. Okay, if I'm going through this bin, then it's going to be a dollar bin. If I'm going through this bin, it's going to be under five dollars. So, moral of the story: make things easy for people to understand. My second tip would be, if you're going to price your cards, get yourself a price gun. This this price gun, I want to say it was 100 bucks. There's cheaper ones out there. I got this one from Staples, I want to say. I'll link one in the, the comments below. Um, but just having this, this price gun has honestly just saved me so much time in the way that some people just put their label straight on there. If you have a hundred, if you have a hundred dollar cards, you could slam that out and maybe couple minutes if that um so being able to get this done very very fast is, is really nice and i think they personally just look really clean let's see if we could get this to focus so these are my uh stickers just says 120 i put the dollar sign right there and then each um you could put um you get rid of the dollar sign you could do whatever you want with that if you're going to sell 50 cent cards you could sell 50 cent cards you could put cents on there um, so I just think the price gun is really nice in the way that I do the, I use the price gun with higher end cards and I use it with lower end cards. It makes things a lot faster. Tip number three would be if you're pricing dollar cards and you have a lot of dollar cards, maybe don't go and look up every single one of your cards. Um, why I would say that is it's going to take up a lot of time and me personally, I'm not in the, in the, in the game of making every single dollar on every every dollar card. I'd rather leave the next guy some room to maybe buy my cards out of my box and maybe throw it up on eBay and make some a couple bucks on it because I personally think that leads to more future business because you have more people coming to your table and maybe they buy something in your value bin and you and you put it at a good price. Um, they'll look through your, your case as well and spend more money over there. So that's just my idea of I'd rather not look up every individual card. Some some people will, um, but just me personally, I will put things in piles. So this is this is all three dollars. This is all two dollars. This is all four dollars, and then price it out like that instead of looking up every card individually. It could take up a lot of time. Tip number four would be when you do price your cards that are going to be going in your case instead of like a dollar bin. I personally don't price my cards right at the comp. I will price a little bit under the comp. But then at the same time, let's say if you're pricing all your cards at 90%, then you know in your head, okay, I could go down 20% if I want to sell it at 70%, or I could go down 10% if I want to be at 80%. One thing I've learned, some guys can catch you on this, so it's, it's a little bit more difficult, but if you could develop some sort of system in the way that, let's say you have this Josh Allen card right here. It is $120 and you put a blue mark on it. The blue mark means that you could go under 10% on it. The red mark, let's say you put a red mark on there, that means you go down 20%. So if you have some sort of color coding way that you could know, okay, I don't even have to look up the comp on that card. I know how much room I have on it because I know I have everything color coded. 
So that makes it easier that, okay, I don't even have to look up a comp when someone asks me, hey, what's the last one did? If you count your, if you count your cards the night before, it's a lot easier to just have color coded and be like, okay, I know the actual value on this, so I could sell it at this, at this point. My next tip would be something that I picked up just a couple months ago, but I think that it's been working really well for me, so I'm gonna put it out there for other people as well. So, like I said, I put my prices on cards that'll go in my case, but now I've started to put, if it is a one of one, if it's out of 49, I will put like this little green sticker. For this one, I have a little perp pink sticker out of 99, my handwriting's terrible, but so then if the person can't see the little serial number on the bottom of the card, or maybe it's on the back and you can't even tell, I think just having that bold sticker on there, some people will uh, print it out and then put it on the top of the card. Some people are just different in that way. I'll just put out of 99 or out of 50, and then if it's a rookie, I'll put rookie on there. I think it just helps the maybe first time collector or someone that hasn't seen the card before, hey, I didn't know that was out of 49 because it's on the back and now I know because I saw it on the front and if it says rookie too, maybe you don't know it's a rookie card. It just helps the person that's looking to buy your card to understand what that card is. My next tip, tip number six would be, I know this sounds really self-explanatory, but don't overprice your cards. Um, when you overprice your cards and someone pays full on a card that's like 120%. It usually, it, 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 I'm not even going to say usually, it never ends up to be a good thing in the way that that guy goes home, looks it up on eBay. He paid 500 bucks on this card. He paid over 20% more on it. And, and now he's just pissed and he's never going to do business with you. He's going to be loud to his buddies whenever he sees you at a show and be like, he overcharged me 20% on this card. I can't believe he did this. He's a scumbag. Don't go up to him at shows. So just being honest with people, not overpricing your cards. I understand if a card's a $20,000, $25,000 card and you can't put an estimate on it, then that's understandable. But if a card consistently is selling on eBay and you've got it at 20% or 25% more than it is, people aren't gonna do business with you and you're not gonna last in this industry. Tip number seven, and this was honestly Something that I never thought this little piece of plastic would be so crucial to my business, but now I use these every single day and they're honestly great. So these are what's called team, Some I just, I call them team bags. These are one touch resealable bags by Ultra Pro. I personally like the uh, cardboard gold ones because they fit really snug but I don't have any of those right now. So they just go on the card right here. You could see, and you could take your card out this way. I like it a lot because you don't have to put the price tag directly on this one touch or directly on this graded card. You put it directly on the sleeve. So it's $600 on here. It's not $600 on here. So would highly suggest those. They're only a couple bucks. I want to say two or three dollars. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them on eBay. Get them anywhere, honestly. Highly suggest those if you're taking your cards to a show and you're going to be putting some IRN stuff out there. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I've been making these tips videos and it seems like you guys have been liking them a lot as of recently. So I'm going to keep these pumping them out. Let me know in the comments below. What other tips do you guys want to hear from me? Anything card show really related, anything cards related, anything eBay related, let me know in the comments below. If you guys can, please subscribe to us. Stick around. We're going to be putting some great content out. Leave a like. Share this with a friend. Share this with a family member. See you guys in the next video. Peace.